Hello everyone and welcome back to trying to get the shuttle to the moon in Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program. Last time we tried to use 1960s American engines, primarily Carolox, with the F1 engines and the E1 engines, and we didn't quite end up in orbit with enough Delta V to manage it. Of course, we're also using the RL60s, or which are modified RL10s, on the booster packs above the shuttle's wings in order to make the transfer. This time I'm going to be using Merlin engines, Merlin 1Ds from SpaceX. So this is the SpaceX Armageddon shuttle, if you will. And we will see how far we get. The Merlin 1Ds are lighter, have a better thrust to weight ratio than the E1s. So that's why I think they will perform better. Uh, otherwise, the tankage mass is still the same. We still have the same tanks. And they are still the balloon tanks that we had from the previous episode. And, uh, well, here we don't have enough thrust. I put 13 Merlin 1Ds at the bottom of the external tank, and 3 each on each of the side boosters on the opposite, opposite side from the shuttle. And so, yeah, that does not seem to be enough. You can see the boosters, the uh, SRBs are almost out, and we aren't even halfway to the altitude that they normally go out at. So I decided to put seven engines on each of those uh, pods opposite the shuttle. Uh, I need to come up with a better name for those. Anyway, and that brings us to 27, which means a uh, 27 total, including the 13 at the bottom of the external tank, which means that now we have as many as the Falcon Heavy. Of course, not with the Falcon Heavy's tankage arrangement, it's a little bit different here. So we will see if that gets us any further. Now once again, the basic challenge is I can't mess with the shuttle's stack, and I can't uh, change its OMS arrangement or anything like that. I can put something in the cargo bay, that's allowed, but otherwise I can't change the stack because, frankly, otherwise it'd be too easy. <laughs> so uh, I wouldn't have to test it. I would be able to calculate it beforehand if I could just remove those SRBs in particular because right now the SRBs are actually complicating the ability to calculate this and it requires me to actually launch it to test it to see how much delta V we end up with. So yeah that's basically why I've opted for this particular challenge is because otherwise I'd be able to calculate it too easily. Um, now I have to launch them and this is all during live streams so there was suspense involved for both me and the audience. We don't know exactly how much we'll end up with at the end. So here we go, SRB separation. Now there's somewhat less suspense once we get rid of those. But otherwise, MechJet can't really calculate it properly as long as those are firing in parallel with both the shuttle engines and these other engines, the Merlins in this case. So there goes the tank, uh, tank at the bottom of the external tank. And now it's just the ones on the opposite side. And that was a mistake. I needed to action group those to be able to shut them down. It was getting imbalanced, so I had to release them somehow. And But we need to action group all of those in order for that not to happen in the future. So is doing its role there. I mean, we're still okay. But we would actually like to have those go out naturally before releasing them instead of having to shut them down while there's still fuel in that tank, those tanks. Here we're pretty good on the external tank. It's pretty much finishing right at the correct time. It's imbalanced right now, of course. And we fired those RL-60s. I'm trying to stop the script. There's Control-C to stop the script. But I pressed C earlier, I guess, or click. I was outside of the KOS window, so it changed into the cockpit view. But yeah, you notice we ignited the RL-60s early to reduce the amount of fuel in those tanks to help maintain the balance. So we end up with enough fuel technically to transfer to the moon, so I plot it. But it's probably not the safest thing to do, and I'll explain why when we uh, do a subsequent attempt. But in this case, we've got a problem in that the burn time's really long, and especially with the OMS engines. What I've got in the shuttle's cargo bay right now is a tank of extra OMS fuel. And I forgot how long the burn time was going to be. Just the shuttle on its own, its OMS engines take 20 minutes to burn. That's with only like 600 meters per second uh, without cargo. We basically doubled that and we've got more burn time. And so, yeah, it's 
bad. We, I tried to do the burn all at once and that is not a good idea. We actually have to do part of the burn on one orbit and then burn again on a second orbit in order to reach the moon. There's also the complication that the OMS engines are tilted and so you can't just point at the node and expect it to work out. Anyway, I decided that we could do with some more thrust to weight ratio. So, so much for having the same number as the Falcon Heavy, I had four there. And then uh, to the boosters on the opposite side of the shuttle, I make them full Falcon 9s. Well, except with bigger tanks. Uh, so they have nine engines now and I'm action grouping them as I decided was necessary. So that's a total of 35 engines. Or, wait, is it 35? So 9, 18, and then 17, yeah, yeah, 35. So we get off the ground a little bit better this time, but the lag is worse. So, yeah, lots of engines for it to render plumes for. Not the best situation. Another thing I had to do was pack more food, but I, I think I ultimately packed too much food. I think I was thinking of uh, having seven Kerbonauts, but we only have four, so we ended up carrying a little bit too much by way of supplies. On this go, we will fly by the moon, by the way. We ended up fixing the problems as such. So the boosters were off, and actually not a very long time after I released the center pack there. You can see that's only about 8 seconds after we released the SRBs. I decided to ditch that. We had enough uh, thrust weight ratio now that we had uh, 9 engines on each of those uh, opposite pods. And I ignited the RL60s at about 3 minutes in. So with the extra thrust, with the extra engines on those opposite pods, we actually maintained our balance this time because the external tank is heavier when those go out. So now we were able to use them all up and I didn't have to action group them after all, but probably best to do so. Here uh, we're seeing how the external tank is shaping up. Of course with the extra oomph uh, it is not going to run to depletion and so I have to stop the script. And I decided to transfer the spare fuel from the external tank to my uh, side pods there with the RL60s. That'll give us a little bit more delta V and hopefully save us from having to use the OMS engines for as long on the transfer burn. So off the external tank goes. And here's ignition for translunar injection. We want a free return trajectory, of course. Well, we are also completing orbit. Uh, you can see me pointing at the periapsis there. We hadn't actually completed orbit. This is like the regular shuttle OMS burn combined with a lunar transfer burn. And as planned, I decided to shut down the engines right about there, keeping it to below a two hour orbit. We've done about 600, 700 meters per second, and then I do the rest on the next pass to help things out. Still not the most efficient thing, but they were sort of asymmetrical there. One seemed to have more fuel than the other. I don't know how that happened. So obviously we need to stabilize here and after doing so we can release those side pods and ignite the OMS engines. And we only have to do 315 meters per second with them, but it still takes a long time. But we manage it, and there's our encounter shaping up. And that's obviously not a free return. So we're going to do a mid-course adjustment to get our free return. And there you can see it's a very sweet one, actually. It'll have us passing by the moon pretty close. And we'll also have a return that's inside Earth's atmosphere. So good timing and this is a fairly rare shot of the shuttle leaving low Earth orbit. Yeah, you don't see that too often I don't think. And then here's our mid-course adjustment. That taking a while even with 3x time warp. And that is how it shaped up. Moon periapsis 132 kilometers, Earth periapsis about 90 kilometers. 
And this is yet another shot you don't see a whole lot. But we would like to make orbit around the moon. Now, technically we do have enough fuel to do that. If we had some sort of station around the moon that we could dock to, we could then refuel at that station and then come back. But if we want to come back with just the fuel that we have right now, it's got to be a free return. And that's also because we're going to have to do multiple air braking passes and sort of try and line up with Cape Canaveral. So that's a whole complicated business. But yeah, after using the Merlin 1Ds, we'll move on to other arrangements. For instance, using Raptors. Uh, we will try out Soviet engines, the NK series and the RD-170 relatives, or just RD-170s perhaps, or RD-171Ms, whatever they are. And uh, we will see uh, what works, uh, how much better off certain options are. We'll have a comparative analysis. We can see that the Merlin 1Ds are manifestly better than the 1960s Carolox engines, even the E1s which are sort of interesting in their thrust to weight ratio. They have a much better thrust to weight ratio than other options at that time from the United States. Speaking of rarities, here I am quick saving, which I don't often do, but we are probably going to have to do multiple attempts at this. I've never tried to bring the shuttle back from a uh, lunar trajectory. So I didn't know for sure. Normally for from low Earth orbit, I would bring it to a periapsis of 40 kilometers. Here I brought it to a periapsis of 85. And that brought us down by that much, which isn't great. Um, we would like to get a little bit lower than that. So on the next pass, I brought it to 75 kilometers to see what would happen. And that was not a good idea. So here we go. The body flap is overheating already at 81 kilometers and things are getting imbalanced that's another problem even before anything blows up we were clearly imbalanced and yeah things rip apart so we're going to have to fix a few things and probably not go so low the net result of that though is that the Kerbal is gonna get a higher radiation dose we don't have Kerbalism in this install but uh, in theory, if we were tracking their radiation, they would get a higher radiation dose. By the time the cockpit was subjected to serious heating, we were already going up. So it was bouncing off of the atmosphere, as it were. And obviously, on the next pass, it would probably be destroyed. So anyway, I decided that we should dump some of the OMS fuel. We were carrying too much in the back end compared to what the shuttle would normally come down with. So that was imbalancing us, it was bringing our center of mass too far back. Here though, the body flap, this pass was at 80 km periapsis. The body flap got destroyed by the heat, and then that of course moves the center of lift uh, forward. And that caused a problem because it moved forward of the center of mass. Then the engines blew up, because we had spun around. And with the engines blowing up, the center of mass moved forward of the center of lift again. And so the shuttle became more balanced and regained its posture, but this is not exactly the way we would like to return. So I decided to go ahead and reload the quick save and try again, but it looks like we're gonna have to go with 85 kilometers, which takes an awful long time. So here we're back to the first pass at 85 kilometers and we are at T plus five days. So we're only five days into the mission. Uh, ultimately, in order to get our orbit down, we had to take until T plus 14 days, or roughly 9 days. But here, finally, the apoapsis is in triple digits on the kilometers, and we are successful. I did not keep a count of how many passes we had to do, but a lot of them were through the radiation belts, and it took 9 days, so... You can figure out how baked they ended up being. We'll need some sort of lead line chamber for them, basically. We're going to have to carry one of those. We'll see how we can manage that with the better engines, perhaps. But yeah, here I'm making subtle passes at about 120, 130 kilometers. And I don't even turn on the RCS for those because there's no risk and I wanted to save fuel. You can see how low our fuel is right now, how little delta V. And I even ejected out the tank in the cargo bay to save on Delta V. 
but I leave it in the hands of my reentry script, even though we weren't in a nice circular orbit, which the reentry script technically requires. We were at a 290 by 130 orbit. Now, previously, I had adjusted our inclination so that we would be at a 28.6 degree, degree inclination. I did that on a mid-course adjustment. I probably shouldn't have. We would have had more fuel left over if I had just skipped that. And the reentry script can actually deal with that a whole lot better than it can deal with having this lopsided orbit. It likes to have the orbit uh, circular when it starts out. And as a result, we're ending up in the Gulf of Mexico. So, but we are coming back down. So this is a, well, well, it's a little bit flippy right now. I tried to use atmospheric autopilot because around this time it always goes out of bounds. And at least this time, a judicious use of atmospheric autopilot, I'll turn it off soon there, um, kept it from going completely out of control. So that's interesting. We'll see how to manage that properly later on. Unfortunately, there is an error in the script that leads it to go back to mode 1, and uh, that I need to fix. And I again go into the cockpit instead of aborting the script, but ultimately we are okay for a splashdown here in the Gulf of Mexico. But more work needs to be done. We have made progress with the Merlin 1Ds, and now we have a new motto, More Merlins. <laughs> it was apparently the theme of this episode more merlins so with the shuttle splashing down i'll say thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and i'll see you next time